Hey everyone, it's Dr. Rick, and today is a nasty day. It's raining in Chicago, it's dreary, it's dark. If you're depressed or have a history of depression, this kind of weather will really bring you down. I can't imagine how people in Seattle, or is it Portland, um, will, when there's overcast all the time, will be able to survive, because it just is, every single day is just terrible, it's demoralizing, and it's demotivating. So let's link this to my idea for today. The idea is we need a break. The idea with uh, nutrition and dropping weight is usually going to be some form of restriction, whether it's a uh, caloric restriction, a component restriction, a time-restricted feeding, or a volume restriction. But regardless of the four different things that I use with my patients, having that and only that has your way to enjoy food for too long of a time, you'll break. And again, I always allude it to uh, New Year's when people make great resolutions because they're inspired, but then they drop off the wagon within two weeks because there's nothing there to support them. There's no dopamine, there's no hormone, or they didn't get their hormones checked. To just go by sheer willpower, it usually won't work unless you're that 1% or 3% of the population that can just drive because of motivation. But uh, in the case where we have hyperpalatable foods and low satiety food ingestion, it's important to know the differences. Uh, again, you have to know the four types of restrictions because most, most of us that are overweight or have medical disease will age quickly due to some form of excessive weight from food. So if we can bring that down, in theory, if you can bring that down, you'll get back to your high school weight. But can we really bring that down on our own without medications and without a team or a, a town to support? No, we can't. Uh, again, success rate has to be implemented so that you have the highest amount of success getting through to lifestyle change. So the way I usually do it is I time it. Uh, now, I'm not talking about CCTV, which is the caloric, the component, the time, or the volume. Uh, I play around with those four depending on the patient and depending on the client. So, and sometimes we'll uh, vacillate between the four and periodize the uh, attempt at dropping some kind of volume or some kind of component. But bottom line is that uh, if you don't have that with your current provider or nutritionist and, and it's not working with you, you can't sustain it, then come see me. I'll put my link in the description or show notes. Uh, but I think uh, everybody's success is different. And you can't just say, drop down to biggest loser phenomenon, exercise intensity and diet, which is essentially not a diet, starvation. So if you increase your exercise and you decrease your uh, amount of uh, fuel or energy, you're going to lose. But will you mentally break before then? And who knows? And usually it's going to be a yes, unless you have something that's driving you, like a huge hike in six months to a kick-ass bucket list destination, or if you have a threat, I'm going to put you through bypass, we're gonna cut the cancer out if you can't change things by a certain amount of time. But that's using Western medicine and your doctor, which I don't think supports healthy lifestyle change. I think you have to have a doctor to decide if there's medical disease and announce it and then repeat to see if you've made a difference. And they have to have a team of non-physicians, a nutritionist, a physical therapist, an athletic trainer, a mindful coach, and a head coach. So I think it's important to levy all this positive in your direction so that you can make a change. I think every disease process, including cancer, if it's not too far advanced, can be reversed. But again, going back to give me a break. If we push too hard, you're going to have mental um, breakdown. And that's why it's important to have some form of a break. So the typical thing, if you've heard about it, is 5-2. But 5-2 is not going to be the five days of eating regular and two days of starvation. I think it's backwards. Five days of watching your diet, two days of just going off the reservation and having fun. Now, if you do take that respite on Saturday and Sunday, because you, you have family time or you're going to have a, a party, especially holidays coming up, don't go too bad. If you take advantage of those two days and you start engulfing way too much volume, you've just destroyed in two days what you were working hard with for five days. So keep that in mind. Always have the sense of, okay, I'm going to indulge a little bit, but I'm also going to pay it forward somehow. And if you avoid the hyper palatable foods, because 
you can say that you can stop with one cookie or one potato chip or one little piece of popcorn that's a lovely butter on it but the likelihood is that you're going to think about that again and again and again because it's not satisfying it, it's it's satisfying uh texturally at the mouth but then after a while there's no satiety in the brain so what are you going to do you're going to want more or seek out something like it that's bad so try to avoid hyper palatable foods processed and try to uh, take in or involve yourself with high satiety foods. And typically high satiety foods are not carbohydrate. They're going to be protein and fat. I know the vegans don't like hearing that, but you can get protein out of some plants. You just have to be careful about the type of plants and the volume again. So, so that's probably uh, for some other um, lecture, but today I just wanted to empower you to be able to uh, move forward with some form of restriction, have a design of one of the four elements of restriction, and then maybe give yourself a break over the course of several, several small breaks over the course of a duration of time. Three months, I think it's fair because most of the time you can get three months of, you can get data, do three months of a change and repeat the data without having insurance get on your ass and say, no, it's, it's denied. If you don't have insurance, you can go to walk-in labs and pay for it yourself. You just have to be choosy about which blood tests you get. You don't want to spend a million dollars for the blood test to get a baseline and then make some changes that you know are working and just pay another million dollars to say, okay, confirmed, I'm, I'm really losing weight. So the idea is to lose weight, which is mostly fat, but don't lose muscle size or strength. So, which will bring me to my last point, sarcopenia or dynapenia, which is decreased muscle mass and decreased power and strength. I, I think it's important to have that as a goal, but having too many goals at the same time, again, loads the bat for swinging out and striking. So we have to have, I usually say for beginners, one task, one change, and then implement and work towards your goal. Then once you get to the next goal, take a break and then meet again. At least that's what I do with my patients. Meet again so we can reprogram, get more aggressive or pull back a little bit. Because again, there's no one blueprint for everybody and everybody's uh, uh, challenges are different. Uh, whether it's a CEO of a company or a mom of five kids or somebody's taking care of uh, kids and parents or somebody that's lonely. So there's different ways, different ages, different social structures, different uh, monetary uh, prices that you have to involve yourself in, with. And it, it always takes a 30,000 foot view from somebody like me, an integrative medicine physician to say, okay, I can see where our map is lacking or where the roads are washed out. So let's go this way. So it just gets you to destination faster or gets you out of the maze faster. And hopefully this gives you a couple of ideas to um, move forward or at least maybe put together your own team. But if you have your ways, uh, whether it's uh, your measure of some form of restriction, if you just go get your RMR or resting metabolic rate, and I like Live Lean RX in uh, Chicago and Warrenville, which mine was about 1,400 to 1,600 calories per day. That's all you have for the day, or you drop that even lower, 100 to 200 calories. You're going to lose, but again, the question is, will you lose fat and muscle? Will you break your, your brain or your motivation in time because it's too restrictive? Uh, hard to say, because when you go too lean on your calories, whether it's one of the four restrictions or not, you can sometimes lose muscle mass. And I don't want that in the long run. If I get a skinny, debilitated, old looking guy that's 30, that will be great on the scale. And you'll tell everybody will tell you, wow, you lost a lot of weight, but they'll probably be saying, hey, is he sick? Uh, we want to have people lose weight but look strong and it's important to have both but you can't always do both that's why it takes an architect to design this thing and design your plan and design a way out and then also design a little bit of a respite a vacation a, a break so hopefully this gives you some ideas or some scaffolding to grow this is not meant to be a substitute for medical advice so take this to your doctor and see how it pertains to you otherwise please consider subscribing to my youtube channel and if you don't have a doctor come see me at my clinic in hoffman estates which i do virtual as well see you in the next video